Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. On the bench tonight, we have this a miniature amplifier. This was something that I made myself back in 2008. So it's quite old and it's quite crappy. We're gonna take this thing apart, we're gonna tear it down, and we're gonna see what I did back in 2008 and how I managed to assemble this thing from parts of an old stereo receiver, a compact stereo system, an old ghetto blaster, and God knows how many other parts. Now, while I take the screws out of this super high quality particle board top cover, I'd like to explain to you, uh, we're doing this a little bit differently today because I want to test this new camcorder that I got. It's an absolutely enormous piece of equipment. That's why I have it sitting on the tripod, because you really can't expect me to go handheld with this one. This is my first HDV camcorder. So I'm quite excited to see how this is going to look, how this is uh, going to uh, come out once I have it transferred on the computer, what the workflow is going to be like, so on and so forth. Well, the top cover reveals what actually looks surprisingly neat. Let's press the power button, see what happens. Well, it actually turns on. Would you believe it? Now, I haven't used this thing in many, many years. Essentially, I finished this in 2008. I used it for a couple of months and then I retired it. The reason you might be able to hear it already uh, this thing uh, was quite noisy. Might be able to hear that uh, hum in the background. Uh, we do have uh, separate uh, volume regulators for each channel. Uh, bass control, treble control, we do even have a loudness. Mono stereo and two inputs and uh, let's see. We gotta push it in for input one, it looks like. Well, let's start the CD player and uh, see how this performs. And for copyright reasons, I'm really only going to play a couple of seconds off of each song. Loudness doesn't seem to make a difference. So as you can clearly hear, the unit does still work, apart from that stupid background noise. And if we were going to put a little more work into this, we might actually be able to fix that. However, I don't really have any use for uh, this, uh, this uh, thing, so we're going to take it apart. We're going to start with the biggest part of this amplifier, and that is this whole entire module that you can see down here in the bottom of it, uh, mounted on this uh, metal mounting plate. Um, this came out of a dirt cheap silver brand compact stereo system. This was the power amplifier module. That thing was a uh, late 1970s piece of equipment. So you can see we do have a decent size heatsink on this uh, aluminum, which um, <laughs> you can see I routed the input wires through this heatsink, uh, hoping that the aluminum was going to shield the wires, it was going to provide some additional shielding for the wires uh, from the transformer. Uh, we have uh, the power supply, we have uh, a couple of diodes down there, fuses, uh, filter capacitors, and this capacitor right here is actually not original. I had to replace that because um, the original one was leaky and I'm not entirely sure but I think this uh, this was probably the first bad capacitor that I replaced ever. Uh, 
we have uh, one of the reasons why I'm not even going to bother with this thing anymore. We have two integrated amplifier ICs, two chips on this heatsink, made by Hitachi. And uh, the stupid thing is, the data sheets for these are absolutely not available anymore. Not at all. In fact, Hitachi at some point has started reusing the model number. And if you search for the number of that IC, for the part number, uh, all you're going to find is the data sheet for some, uh, I think it was a, a CD-ROM drive motor control IC. Something along those lines. Absolutely not helpful. So that's uh, that's that. Uh, the transformer was also part of the uh, silver stereo system. As you can see, I have uh, this um, I have this uh, winding right here insulated and uh, taped out of the way. And I'm quite amazed that this uh, tape is still holding this in place. Uh, that, of course, uh, would have powered another part of the stereo system. I think this would have been the... Uh, well, actually, uh, I'm not sure. I think this would have been the uh, the dial lights for the tuner, uh, because the 12 volt rail was uh, down here. Uh, you may might be able to see places where capacitors would have mounted, and then right there on the circuit board, right there, uh, we have a place where a linear uh, regulator transistor, just a transistor. Uh, was mounted. I took that all out uh, trying to fix the hum problem that I was experiencing with that thing. As it later turned out, a, a huge part of the hum that I had was due to the bad capacitor. When I replaced it, it became much less, but as you've just heard, it's still there and it's still too much of it. Uh, the speaker terminals, all of that is original. So we look at the back. Let me just... Uh, move this over. Uh, we have uh, a place where the auxiliary input DIN jack would have mounted. This is the place where the antenna jack would have mounted and that's the place where the power cord would have come into that compact stereo system. Up here we have the input jacks. I do have three switches here. Those came out of an Onkyo TX2000 receiver. The jacks and the, uh, the switches receiver that I took apart. And then finally, uh, oh, and uh, the power switch as well. That also came out of that. And uh, the headphone jack was also a part of the silver stereo system. Uh, the preamplifier part, or the tone controls much rather, um, these came out of a rather cheap Sanwa boombox that I had taken apart. Quite an impressive piece of equipment, but very, very low quality. That Sanwa boombox was the one and only cassette deck that I've ever seen where the pinch roller had deteriorated. Now, that was quite a mess. Um, and that thing, you can see it's a circuit board that has these slider controls mounted on it. Kind of a bad design on Sanwa's side. This used to sit up on top of the boombox, so you always had all the dust and dirt falling into those, uh, into those slider controls, so those were incredibly scratchy. I didn't knew anything about contact spray back in those days, and you may have heard the controls were quite scratchy. What I did in order to uh, make them work at least a little bit, um, I actually went into there with a Q-tip and uh, wiped off the carbon tracks. Uh, also, uh, this was actually part of the circuit board of the uh, Sanwa, is this connector right here. As you can see, I very neatly cut that out of the circuit board, unsoldered the original switch from the Sanwa boombox, soldered this circuit board to the switch assembly out of the uh, Onkyo receiver, and then connected the whole thing using the original connector that was on this uh, on this sub-circuit board right here. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that was quite neat. Another thing that I'm noticing is this. Uh, I had some electrical safety going. Now you might not be able to see this on camera, um, but I actually have a piece of rather solid plastic um, between the headphone jack and the power switch. It's, uh, it's right there, this piece of plastic, so <laughs> we won't have any sparks jumping over from the, uh, from the power switch to the, uh, to the ground of the headphone jack. 
So that's pretty much all there is to it. Of course, this was back in the days when I was still taking apart a lot of electronics just to kind of find out what was going on inside of there. Uh, but it, uh, as you can clearly tell, I had started to uh, understand how things worked and that enabled me to uh, assemble this integrated amplifier from a bunch of uh, various different parts. Well, anyway, now the end has come for this thing, so let me take it apart, and once I've done that, we're going to take another look. And here we have the parts that remain. Got plenty of screws, got the power switch, speaker connectors, headphone jack. Uh, just to take a closer look at it, I have the power amplifier module and power supply. I have this uh, pre-amplifier thing. Or, uh, well, it's it, it really, really, it's just a filter. It's It doesn't have any active components on there. And then we have, of course, the power cord. And something that I would like to point out to you uh, with the power cord is uh, this thing. This uh, strain relief right here, that actually came out of an old alarm clock. Yeah, I still remember that. This is the close-up of that filter board. We got uh, volume left and uh, right over there. We got bass and we got treble. And it's all done with a couple of resistors and a couple of capacitors. It's really quite simple. Some more capacitors on the back. Circuit board itself, as you can see, nothing spectacular. Low quality 1970s, I'd say. This is a close-up look at the power supply and main amplifier. Uh, the chips are Hitachi HA1370. You can look them up for yourselves. But back when I was messing around with this thing, I couldn't find any info on those whatsoever. Uh, this is where the 12-volt uh, the power supply for the rest of the compact stereo would have gone. And over here we have uh, some more connections, and those were for a VU meter that was sitting on the front of the stereo system. And this is what remains and goes back into the parts bin where it once came out of. Well, that's it. So, thank you for watching, and see you again soon.